Hey everyone, it's Rika from Silver Logic. I'm going to take you through the order processing and fulfillment part of Go Imagine. So the first thing that you should get when an order, not should, you will get <laughs> when the order is received is this email. And uh, it's pretty basic. It just says your store name, the order number, and then has been processed. Uh, that means when it's processed, that means that the payment has gone through and you are okay to ship this order. If for some reason it says failed or declined or anything else, you're gonna to need to look into why that happened and then maybe contact your customer and find out, you know, do they wanna retry their order, you know, whatever. But unless it says processed up here, uh, don't ship it. <laughs> you should also get an email from Stripe uh, confirming that you got the payment because uh, if you don't get the payment, you don't wanna ship it. And you should also, once we get PayPal running, you should also get an email from PayPal. Uh, it'll be either from Stripe or PayPal, depending on uh, which shipping, uh, which bi uh, billing method they used. The other thing I want to point out is all the emails for Go Imagine are sent from info at goimagine.com. Uh, a lot of times these emails, because your email provider will think that they are junk mail, because some because it's the server sending out so many different emails uh, will go to your spam or your junk folder so you should be checking that folder daily to make sure that this doesn't you know a, a legitimate email doesn't go in there from go imagine you should also figure out how to whitelist or safe list this email address this info at goimagine.com so that it doesn't accidentally go into junk uh, because you don't you don't want to miss an order You'll have to check with your individual email provider like Gmail or Yahoo or whoever you use on how to do that. Uh, until you do that, I would definitely make sure and check your spam or junk folder every day uh, just so you don't get behind. And the, uh, the, the actual email you get is, is gonna be very generic. It's nothing exciting. It's got your logo if you've uploaded it to the uh, vendor area. It's just got who it's shipping to, order information, what they ordered, and that's about it. So there's really nothing too exciting in this email. But once you get it, then you know you've got to log in to the vendor profile here and process your order. So when you first log in, there's really not going to be too much that you see on here. Uh, you're just going to have to go to orders, view orders. And because this is a test account, we have some other tests in here, but I will be working with this order, which matches that email, which is order 865. And when we click on this, it will take us into the order. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is uh, if you want to look at the customer's information, you can click on this link. You can see uh, just some basic kind of information. You shouldn't really need to go in there, but that's just what that is. And if you click on this at symbol, which I'm not going to do, it will actually open up your email client and send it'll send a set up an email to send to them. It shows their phone number. You've got some options here, which are just to view the order, which would be the same as clicking the order ID right here. And once you get into the order here, you'll see we have customer information, which gives us the customer name, their email address, their IP address if you uh, need it for some reason. Usually the, uh, the IP addresses are shown is if you get a fraudulent order, you can then report that IP address uh, to go imagine so they can then block it on the server or take other steps if needed. Otherwise, you don't really need that information. Uh, the phone number is there. It's also set that if you click it, it will try and call it from either if you're using your cell phone, it'll try and call them from your using your cell phone or if you click it if i tried to click it now it would open probably skype to try and call them or some other voice over ip service you see their shipping information right here and their billing information you also see uh, what they ordered if they ordered more than one thing there'll be multiple lines of the same thing uh, not the same item but it'll, it'll look the same it'll be formatted the same you'll see their subtotal the shipping cost taxes their total You'll also see notes. Anything in the notes section here, your customer can see. This, if you also recall from that email that I just showed you, anything that this is the note a customer left, and it was shown to me on the confirmation email. So anything, you can add more notes in here if you want. Um, if for some reason, maybe, you know, the customer will probably see the notes if they pay attention. I'm guessing if you really need to talk to them about something or tell them something about the order as you ship it, I wouldn't put it in there. I'd send them a message or an email to let them know. Internal notes are literally just internal for you. Nobody else will see them. 
So you can put some notes there, maybe about, you know, maybe you had to substitute something or you wanted to put some notes on the order, like what font you used, you know, who knows? Uh, th that's just for your own purposes if you need it. The gift receipt message is just for uh, if somebody is placing a gift order, they might put some notes in there that, that you would want to pass on to whoever you are shipping it to. Up here, when an order first comes in, there's the general tab and that's what we're on now. If you go to the optional settings tab, there is this uh, option here called communication and it's disabled by default as of right now. Uh, so if you turn this on and then press save changes, the page will reload and you'll now have a new tab here called communication. And what this tab does is it allows the customer to send you messages about the order, also allows you to send messages to the customer through the Go Imagine interface here instead of just taking their email address and sending it, you know, off, essentially not offline, but off of Go Imagine. Um, I know with other companies that you sell online with, you usually want to keep your communication internal because if something arises, there's a dispute between you and the customer. And in this case, if Go Imagine has to step in, they would want to see the communications between you two. And the easiest way to do that would be through the communication tab here. So if you click add post, um, it'll show your name, the date and time, and then you can send a message to them and uh, type in whatever you want and you press add. I'm not gonna do it, but once you press it, it'll then show the message here kind of like a messenger style um, window. So that's very handy if you need to contact your customer. I believe they go imagine is working on making this so it is enabled by default, but as of right now, September 24th, as far as I know, it is still defaulted to disabled. So back on the general tab, uh, the last kind of box you need to look at over here is this blue one. And this tells you the order status, their payment method. Right now it should always say credit card because Go Imagine's only set up to use Stripe as a payment processor. Uh, but in the future, I believe PayPal will be an option. So it could say PayPal there in the future. It'll just, or, or any other one. Uh, if you're having, if you have managers with separate login accounts, they'll show that information there. And then the shipping information. So it'll say your vendor name and then it'll say your shipping method. So this is actually the shipping method that you set up back in the shipping uh, stuff when you first got started. So that's how you know what shipping level your customer uh, has asked for. And then right here, this will be blank by default because you haven't added a tracking number or a carrier. Uh, so now I'm going to go over how to add your tracking information. There are two different ways you can do this. Um, and this is after you've gone to wherever you go, uh, it, whether it be you take your, your package directly to the post office and buy postage there and get a tracking number, or if you um, uh, generate your own through something like Pirate Ship, which I am going to have a video on how to generate your stuff through Pirate Ship really quick and easy, uh, or any other you know, something, something similar, um, like ship brush, that's another one. And, um, that's after you've done all that and you have your tracking number, if you are going to be putting one in or after you've actually shipped the order, you're not required to put a tracking number in. That is just something that if you've added it, you know, if you, if you have one, this is where you put it. So you can, so the two ways, this is the first one. This one's kind of the fastest, but it's not the easiest in my opinion. So for tracking number, you could literally type it in right here you know, type it in and then pick the carrier of who you shipped with. Uh, and some of these we obviously don't use like Australia Post and well, no, yeah, because I think we're only US right now. So we wouldn't be using Canada Post, DHL, Australia Post, uh, you know, all these other ones. Pretty much it's going to be these uh, USPS, UPS or FedEx most likely. So we're going to say we're using UPS. And then you, what you can do is press save changes up here. I'm not going to do it. Well, actually, yeah, we can do it. So we can press save changes. And now it says the order has shipped essentially. And it's, uh, there was some confirmation messages there. And now we see down here, we can't enter anything, but you can see that we picked USPS. This is the tracking number. And I believe if we click it, it will take us to UPS. And obviously it's not a real tracking number, so we can't uh, check it. But when you did it like that, after you pressed save changes, it did not send any information to the customer nor did it change the order status for this order. It's still under received and processing. And the customer hasn't gotten notified that, that they have received, uh, their, their order has been shipped. 
So if you want to do it this way, after you put that stuff in there, then you'll need to manually come up here and change the order from order received and processing to order fulfilled and complete. Uh, before you click that, just FYI, you'll notice whenever we're dealing with orders, there's these three checkboxes that a lot of the time are already clicked for you. Uh, sometimes they're not, like when I pressed the save changes up here, they are not automatically clicked. But when you are changing statuses, you're going to want to notify the customer, except like when I'm in here messing around with an order for testing purposes, I don't want to notify the customer every time because they're going to be like, why am I getting all these different random emails? Um, so you can uncheck mark these if you're changing the order status. Like let's say you want to change it to back ordered because uh, you've talked to the customer, you tell them you don't have it in stock and like, okay, I'll wait. You can change it to back ordered. Uh, when I uncheck mark those, Nobody was notified. If I had left them checked mark, they would have gotten another email similar to that processing one that we saw earlier, but it would say your order is being backordered. Uh, so I'm, but like, uh, like I said before, when you did the shipping method manually, you're gonna have to uh, manually change it to order fulfilled and completed. And you're gonna wanna have notify customers. You probably don't need these other two, but uh, you know, check marked because you're the vendor and you're the orders department. So that's up to you. It doesn't, I guess it doesn't hurt to get a confirmation of that to have in your email. But then you're going to have to go ahead and change this to order fulfilled and completed. And then once you do that, that's a think in here. Think, think, think. And now it says status has been changed. Order is fulfilled and completed. If we go back to view orders, you now see this one we were working on is green. That means that you are done with that order and you don't have to do anything else, hopefully. <laughs> Now there is one other way to do this and I'm going to fix this real quick so that we can do this. This screen, by the way, is you can look at your, um, your shipment before that. So I'm going to change this back to order processed, received and processing. I'm going to go back into it. Now it looks just like what it was before. It doesn't look like it's been processed at all. So the other way to do this, which I think is faster because you don't then have to manually change this and um, all that other stuff, you know, you can click this create detailed shipment. And when you click that, it opens up this new window. It'll show you all the products that are, uh, that were ordered. Um, what's nice about this is let's say somebody ordered uh, 20 things and you can only ship, maybe you had to ship in three different shipments. You can pick, um, It'll show you the quantity, like if they ordered 20 of the same one, you could pick, you know, I put five in a box and I have a tracking number for that box. And so you can do uh, just that one box. After you do the five, if you still have 20, it would then show you 15 more that you have to ship out. So that's really nice if you have multiple packages. If you just have one, you know, it's, you, you know, it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, but we go ahead and look down here and we see our shipping methods. These are the shipping methods that we set up. So this is where you would pick, you know, they, they paid for USPS first class. That's how we shipped it. We put in our tracking number. We pick our carrier. If you have any notes about this, and these will be shown to the customer in the confirmation email. Uh, if you have any comments, you can type them here. And then this is, this is where it takes out a step. So now you can have it automatically change the order status and you can pick. So we're going to have them change it to order fulfilled and completed. And we can also check mark send shipment notification to customer. So that means it's going to get rid of those last two steps essentially in this one step here. So after you have everything filled out, you can press create. La la la, it'll get there. <laughs> it's thinking real hard. There we go. It says shipment has been created. So now our order status is order fulfilled and completed. We see our tracking number down here again. And if we went back to orders, we would see it as green. We'd see the green order status and everything would be good. So the one last thing is I do wanna show you this shipment box again. So after you've shipped something out, you will notice there's a box down here that says shipments. If you just had one, uh, like one box that you shipped out, it'll say one. If you shipped out two boxes uh, and you put in two different tracking numbers like we were just talking about, it'll say two and so on. So you can click shipments. And this is just so you can then go back and look at the shipment information. Um, and you can also 
uh, there's some statuses over here that you can change. I don't believe you need to do these, uh, anything, there's nothing, as far as I know, within Go Imagine, you do not need to change these to picked up, packed, or shipped. I mean, you can for your own purposes. So I hope this helps you guys out. Let me know if you have any questions.